when it comes to Jesus, when it comes to what God has promised you in the Bible, when it comes to what God has promised you personally, when it comes to the word of God, we must not be double minded. We must be singularly minded on Jesus, on what God has told us. We must be singularly focused and not focused here and then focused there. We must have an undivided heart toward Jesus, toward the word of God, toward the truth, toward the promises of God in the Bible, toward the promises that God has made you personally, whether in a vision, in a dream, or he has spoken into your spirit. We must be, we must have an undivided heart, not a divided heart. So a part of my heart I give over there, and a part of my heart I give to Jesus, and to the promises of God but another part of my heart I give over here because I'm I'm doubting I'm not quite sure I'm not certain we have to be singularly minded otherwise we make ourselves open and receptive to the enemy Satan the devil to come in and deceive us like the serpent deceived Eve in the Garden of Eden God specifically spoke to them, Adam and Eve, telling them, you can eat from any tree of the garden, but do not eat from that one tree. For the day you eat of that tree, you shall surely die. God was speaking about a spiritual death because they lived another 800 years after eating from that tree. Now the serpent comes in, causing Eve to doubt what God has already spoken. Did God really tell you not to eat from that tree? Knowing good and well that God, that yes, God did tell them not to eat from that tree. <clears throat> so now Eve starts to be double-minded. But before the serpent came in, she was singularly minded. Do not eat from that tree. She knew what God has spoken to her. And you know what God has spoken to you personally. Or you know the word of God, what it says. So before the serpent, she was singularly minded. Do not eat from that tree. I must not eat from that tree. For the day I eat from that tree, I will surely die. But when the serpent comes in and says, did God really tell you not to eat from that tree? She starts to become double minded. See, now she's opening up her ears to another voice other than the voice of God. Now she's opening up herself to another source, to draw from another source other than the source of God. So now she begins to become double-minded. Hmm, did God really say that? Is that what God really meant? The equivalent of that today would be, hmm, the Bible does say that. But is that what the Bible really means? Or... <clears throat> there are promises in the Bible. There are over 7,000 promises in the Bible that God has made to all of his children. And then the enemy comes in. Yes, but does that, does that promise apply to me? For example, the Bible says, one of the promises in the Bible is that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, you have been healed. Mm. The Bible does say that. But does that really apply to me? That's opening, up your, that's opening up your ears to another voice. That's allowing the serpent to come in and cause you to become double-minded. So a part of your mind is on the word of God. By his stripes you have been healed. But another part of your mind is of opening up yourself to another voice other than the voice of God. Is that what the Bible really means though? Does it really apply to me? Is that what God really meant? Does it apply today or was it just for them? You're making yourself double-minded. You're dividing your heart. You're dividing your focus. Well, part of your focus is here. But then another part of your focus is, yeah, but does that apply to me? And when you start thinking in terms of, does that healing apply to me? Then you're opening yourself up to so much 
to a voice other than the voice of God. And that voice that is not the voice of God will start to tell you all sorts now. Will start to tell you everything that is just opposing to the word of God. Where you can find healing in alternative places. Where you can find healing through new age spirituality. Where you can find healing through medication. Where you can find healing through acupuncture, say for example. When the Bible is very clear, by his stripes you're already healed. You don't need to be searching here and there and alternatives for healing. And sit down and start stressing yourself of the sickness, the disease that is in your body. By his stripes, you are already healed. In the spiritual realm, you are already healed. It's about bringing it. It's about transferring it. It's about making yourself such an open, surrendered, obedient vessel for that healing which is in the spiritual realm to come in to the natural realm. That's when you begin to experience it in the natural realm. That's when you begin to witness it, to see it, to live it physically. Not that the healing does not already exist for you. It does. It's a promise of God in the Bible. It already exists in the physical realm. Jesus already purchased your healing when he went to the cross 2,000 years ago at Calvary. In the spiritual realm, it is done. It is finished. It's about bringing that which is finished into the natural and it does not help you when you start opening up your ears to another voice when you start drawing from other sources when you start becoming double-minded yes the bible says that but everything that comes after but is not from god what well, god says he will provide but god says by his stripes i'm healed but God says he is my shepherd, but God says he will never leave me nor forsake me, but everything that comes after the but is not from God. It could be another promise of God in the Bible. And, and remember, it could be a promise that God has made you specifically about the situation you're currently going through, going through about about your future about a member of your family it could be something personal specific for you other than the seven thousand promises that are in the bible for all of his children so it could be another promise such as the lord will provide abraham says the lord will provide And instead of holding onto that promise like it's the oxygen that you breathe, because it is, you start being double-minded, opening your ears up to another voice. Yeah, the Bible does say that the Lord will provide, but look at your situation. But your, but your back does seem to be up against the wall, but the odds are against you. But it doesn't look like the Lord is providing. Ah, this is why the Bible says walk by faith and not by sight. This is why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18, we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So the Bible is saying do not look at the things which are seen. So the things which are seen could be saying, well, there is sickness in the body. The things which are seen could be saying, well, I am being evicted. The things which are seen could be saying, well, I am struggling financially. The things which are seen could be saying, well, it's proof, it's evident. My kids are being rebellious. My spouse is unfaithful. My marriage is being destroyed. The Bible says, do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. The things which are not seen is that, which are the things in the spiritual realm, they're not seen until you bring them in the physical realm, unless you see them with your spiritual eyes to see that they are true, they do exist, they are real. This is why we need to look with our spiritual eyes, not with our physical eyes. The Bible says, do not look at what is seen, but what is unseen. What is unseen in the spiritual realm is that you are already healed, is that the Lord will provide. 
is that God is a restorer. God is a provider. God is a healer. God is a deliverer. You know, and every other of the 7,000 promises that are in the Bible. Do not look at what is seen, but what is unseen. But to, to be able to see what is unseen, you need to know the word of God because the word of God tells you the 7,000 promises in the Bible. And you start looking at these promises of God, which are in the spiritual realm, which are not seen with the physical eyes, but with the spiritual eyes of the heart, which means it would help if you meditate on the word of God, meditate on the promises of God in the Bible. In other words, you can close your eyes or leave your eyes open and meditate on the scripture that says, by his stripes I'm healed. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. By his stripes I'm healed. And start thinking about that and meditating on that and replaying that in your mind and keep thinking of that scripture and allow it to continuously play in your mind. The Bible says meditate on the word of God day and night. Continuously play in your mind until it starts to fill you. Until it become until until you become to uh, to a place where you are connecting with it, and then to a place where you are one with it. Until it becomes to, to until it starts to feel so real to you, oneness. Jesus says, "Abide in me, and my words abide in you." So His word needs to abide in you, needs to be in you, needs to live in you, needs to be you. It's not just a word that you are reading and then you forget about it because that's just like the word coming in, and then the enemy comes to steal. <coughs> The Bible says <coughs> it's like planting seeds and the birds of the air come and snatch the seed. And so it will never be planted. It will never grow because the bird of the air, which is the enemy, comes to steal that seed. The seed is the word of God. You're planting it in the soil, in the ground, in the, in the ground, which is your heart. And you, you plant it and water it by meditating on it and rethinking it and replaying it in your mind. Until you start to see life coming from it. You plant the seed, it starts to grow. So you keep planting that seed and watering it. Meditating on it is the equivalent of watering it. Until you start to see the seed that you planted, life coming from that seed. And still you, so if the seed you planted is by his stripes I'm healed. And you're watering that by meditating on that. There shall come a time where you will start to see this seed germinate and it starts to grow. So you will start to see the proof of by his stripes I'm healed. You will start to see proof of that. But that goes without saying that you're meditating on that. You're not meditating a little bit on that and then being double-minded and opening, opening your ears up to another voice. So now you're also meditating on this voice because there will be a confusion when it's time for these seeds, because there's also seeds that you're planting in your heart. When it's time for these seeds to grow, there will be a little bit of this and a little bit of that and they will be mixed up in there and you won't be able to differentiate which plant is which which is the seed, which is the weed, which is the, and there will just be a big, a big fat confusion, which is what the enemy wants. He wants to confuse you. The Bible says God is not the author of confusion. It could be something else that you're meditating on. Maybe the enemy is trying to fill you with fear, fear about your mission that God is sending you on or fear about your marriage. That is currently on the rocks or fear about your children that are currently being rebellious or fear about finances or fear that you might be evicted you know there's a verse for everything that you're going through a verse regarding fear there are many but one of them is god has not given you a spirit of fear but a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind meditate on that Medi meditate on that until you become singularly minded on that until you become singularly focused on that until your heart becomes undivided on that for god has not given me a spirit of fear i do not have a spirit of fear i reject this spirit of fear 
This spirit of fear is not of God. It's not mine. I do not accept it. I do not want it. I will not think about it. I will focus on the truth. I will focus on what God has given me. He has given me not a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. I have a spirit of power because God has given it to me. I have a spirit of a sound mind because God has given it to me. I have a spirit of love because God has given it to me. For God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. And you meditate on that while you're driving, while you're cooking, while you're standing in the shopping queue to pay for your groceries. You meditate on that within your heart. And that's how you become, you, you that's how you develop an undivided mind, undivided focus, an undivided heart on the truth rather than on facts. Imagine if Moses was to focus on the fact rather than the truth. The truth is God told him, approach the Red Sea. I will deliver you. You will see the hand of God. The fact was that well, the Red Sea is a dead end, which is ahead of me. So it looks like God is leading me toward a dead end. Another fact is that Pharaoh and his army are chasing us. In other words, they want to kill us, they want to destroy us, or they want to put us back into bondage. That was a fact. They were being chased. It was a fact. Moses could have focused on what he saw, but the Bible says, do not focus on what is seen, but what is unseen. What is unseen, God says, I will deliver you. It remained unseen, but it was still a promise of God. All promises of God come to pass when you obey, when you walk in the ways of God. There is no promise in the Bible that God has made for his, to all of his children that does not apply for you today that is not yours for you to take and experience and live today when you start walking in the ways of God. But if Moses, because he did not see the deliverance and he saw the facts that his back was against the wall, went by sight and not by faith, he could have started running here, there and everywhere, disregarding the voice of God, opening his ear up to another voice, the enemies are behind you. Ahead of you is a dead end. Take that path. Take this path. Go over there. Do this. Do that. But Moses did not open up his ear to another voice. He had his ears open to one voice and one voice only. I will deliver you today. You will see the hand of God approach the Red Sea. Walk by faith and not by sight. It's very important. That we get the word of God which is alive and active in to us. Meditate on it, meditating on it in our mind until we become singularly minded on it. We focus on it, on faith, on what is unseen rather than what is seen. Until we become singularly focused on the unseen. Until the unseen comes in the natural and becomes seen. We start meditating and dwelling on the word of God in our hearts, in our hearts, in our hearts until we develop an undivided heart for Jesus, for the word of God, for the promises in the Bible and for the personal promises that God has made you, you specifically. We need undivided undivided anything other than undivided you are opening your ears up to another voice you are opening yourself up and drawing from another source and you will have issues so regardless of what everything looks like around you do not walk by sight walk by faith and i promise you that you will see the hand of God in your life, in his timing, not in your timing, in his timing.
With that being said, if this ministry is blessing you and you want to bless back, offering link is below. My books can all be purchased below. Link is below. Spiritual warfare. Who is God? Worldly life of this. Uh, worldly life of deception. New age court to Jesus Christ, and this is grace. God bless.